What's up guys and welcome to another Will It Run style video. This one very special since we're heading down to the hoarding lot in Philly and we're going to be working on a 1971 Ford F600 X U-Haul box truck. Thing is so awesome in particular because it's manual transmission. Imagine that, a U-Haul with manual trans. That wouldn't fly today. Of course I'm stuck in some morning commute traffic but we'll be on site pretty soon. Here she is. So we'll start by doing a quick walk around tour. I'll make sure to drop timestamps down below if you feel like skipping around and then tear in. So we can see this hood has not been opened in some time. Very excited to see what's under there. Got some ivy growing on it. And definitely gonna need four hoopties. I guess we could try filling them up. But uh, empty weight, 8380, rated at 18,000 gross. You know what, we'll go inside in a second. Let's. Let's just finish our exterior tour. The frame on this thing is thick and in excellent condition. Just a little bit of surface rust on there. Oh, look at the wood, the hardwood on the, the bed. Very nice. Definitely gonna need some tires, darn. And you know what, I'm realizing my first mistake, I don't think I have a socket big enough for these. So it's gonna be a long day, that's for sure. The box itself is in decent shape. Let's take a peek inside in here. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, just some parts and such. Alternator, two barrel. There you go. The U-Haul instructions on there. Wow. Something about this being a U-Haul and how much work this truck has done throughout its life is just it really blows my mind. This is when they were still using aluminum. They've since switched to uh, laminated or fiberglass laminated plywood. But uh, yeah, the box is not bad. I don't see any any floor rot or anything terrible so far. Yeah, a little floor rot right there on the end. Bumper's nice and sturdy. And these doors, well, yeah, they're they're not bad. They're on there. I'm walking on the other side. The old cap is missing, so that's probably full of water. Looks like somebody hit this mirror, tore through the door, and the roof is caved in real bad on it. Uh, well, let's check out the interior. <laughs> is that not a flashback if you've ever seen one? Look at the, look at the orange on this. Don't be caught dead sitting on your seatbelt. No radio. What's up with that? So we got a parking brake here. This doesn't have the two-speed rear. I was rolling around looking at that. Shifter. Nice action. So when I first saw this, I just it blew my mind that it was a manual trans. Because could you imagine today them trying to rent this truck out? I don't know how to drive manual trans anymore. 62,000 miles on it. Speed kills, slow down and live. Shift to lower gears going uphill or downhill. Check oil each time you buy gas. Headliner got busted through when I guess a tree limb landed up here. Windshield's in real bad shape. Um, oh, and something blew out right here. Actually, there's the, the lamination. Darn, the seat just cracked open too, just from bumping it. It's not even that cold out today. We're getting a high of 50 degrees today. Should be nice. Now, as far as how long this truck's been sitting, I'm gonna have to go with at least 15 or 20 years because look at these wheels, the way they're sunk in. And I mean, come on, it's got ivy growing inside the wheel and then trees on next to it growing. And I counted 17 rings on this. They get real small at the end, so there might be more like 20 or so. Uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know if this is gonna be a runner, guys. Darn, I just noticed this door is bent open so far too. All right, let's pop the hood on this. Hood pop pulls. Oh, it's got no air filter. Oh, I... 
got one, but somebody just left it off the carb. That's not good. Water probably got inside of there, especially with this dented hood. The hinges work well though. Somebody kept those greased. It's got, I guess it's uh, yeah, a little small block, maybe a, a 360. Not sure, we'll have to do some research on that. All the plug wires are off. Got the plugs in, coils disconnected. Looks like somebody was definitely in here messing with it at some point. Bone dry in there. Nice copper radiator though. What is this right here? Oh, oh it's a washer reservoir bag. Look at that. Interesting, never seen one of those that before. Water pump's not seized. I like that it's got the dual belts on there. They used to do a lot of redundancy back in the day and now nowadays they just skimp out on everything. Look at all this oil leaking into here. Hmm. Must be because I... Well, it's coming out top of the air filter there. Get a PCD. Oh yeah, look how much oil's in there. Wow. How the heck did that happen? I guess we'll start with the norm, blow all this stuff off, pull the plugs, lube them, see if the motor rotates, get some spark, figure out this firing order situation, and yeah, just cross your fingers. I was just flipping out in my head thinking, where's my air hose? I, I remember I actually put it under the hood though. It just seems to make more sense keeping it under here. Ah, <laughs> oh, that would have sucked if I forgot it. Power by Ford on the white valve covers. That must have looked really cool from the factory. This Croil can's going weak sauce on me. Whoa, what is this thing? Is that like a key governor or something? It takes a key right here on the carburetor. I've never seen that before. What the heck is that? That's awesome. You know, this is a slow going day for me, but I'm starting to get my motivation up a little bit. Check the old lipstick. Oh, that doesn't want to come out. Excellent. Just at the full mark. You know what I love about junkyards like this? You can see people's old body work. Like there's a dent here and a big one down there. It's just all coming off. And you go throughout the yard. You find that everywhere. How about fixing this panel right here? And this did have Bondo all over it at one point. Patching that up. This thing was probably sitting on a used car dealer lot at one point. Looking pretty. The next video was going to be on this little Squire, but this thing is super rough shape. However, the motor, oh, tripping that off the motor seems half decent on it. Uh, you know, definitely has some potential. Or this square body that has a diesel in it. Web Cadillac. Got some auto lights in it. Some of these plugs are really tight, like I can't get that one at all. Luckily it's not a 5.4 Triton motor, right? Every one of these would be breaking off. All the plugs look pretty good, no rust on the tips. A little slew jeep. We'll hose down all these cylinders now. Put some fogging oil I got. And after this one's been soaking, Goes. See if we can grab the fan and rotate it. Nope, not yet. I happen to not have the right socket size for the crank. I go from 7 8 to 27. But let's get a monkey wrench on this fan. There it goes. Seen the motor, motor budge a little bit. Make sure I didn't leave it in gear, which I did. There's the clutch in. Oh, look, the clutch even released. Although the pedal doesn't come back up. Unless I pull it. Brake pedal. Seized, throttle seized. Yeah, I definitely hear a good amount of rust. On, obviously on these belts, but I'm pretty sure I hear some noise in the cylinders too. But since I don't have a good means to go 360 on it, we'll just try hooking the starter up. Battery connections here, we got ground, positive, over to the solenoid. That's real safe. 
You know what I'm realizing? I don't have enough vice grips in my toolkit. Only one pair. See if I could add some more. I need some wire brushes too, but I'm thinking the knurled end of this extension will work. Yeah, that'll work good to clean up the corroded lead. I forgot to do the tap test. You always want to hit it first, make sure there's no short, and check if you do have a current draw that's going to kill your battery real quick. Doesn't look to be the case for this one now. So instead of having a solenoid on the starter, this one has it up here. And I'm sure this doesn't work, but there it goes. Wow, look at that. It does work. And here goes cranking. It sounds, ooh, sounds good. Except for that, oh, it's just squeak, uh, slipping on the alternator. It's just slipping because of these belts. They've been sitting on the pulleys and rusted for so long that, well, they're much skinnier than they should be. I'm gonna toss the plugs back in now. Imagine putting a spark plug back in your engine when it looks like this. But, yeah, well, it's kind of like Mad Max conditions out here. Guys, just get it done. Good thing I'm wearing a jacket. Let's hear that crank with the plugs in. We're looking for steady compression across the board. We've got the JF Eggwo jump pack. This thing's been awesome. Whether you get the 3000 or the 4000 amp, it's got the compressor built in. It's been super reliable. I use it all the time. That sounds like a really nice crank. I'm, I'm very happy with that crank. That sounds nice. Sounded like maybe low compression on one or two, but if you hear a crank where it's like rubber, 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 and it keeps having a, like a, a fast speed, that's you got no compression on a cylinder. That sounded pretty good. Looks like we got good vacuum too, because I started pulling the bag in. I did hit that with fog and oil earlier, but I'll uh, shoot a little bit more in there. Plenty of lube. Guys, real quick, while I'm in front of the green screen here, I want to take a few seconds and thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to come out here and work on old junk like this. So if you've been itching to build or improve a website for your business or passion, they have a ton of tools that'll help you do just that over at squarespace.com. Like for instance, their analytics tool that will supply you with insights and data so you can improve your site and build a marketing strategy that's going to help you meet your goals. If you're interested, head over to squarespace.com and if you want to get 10% off your first purchase, squarespace.com slash no nonsense. And now let's go back to the video. Before we tackle Spark, we should probably get some lube flowing in other places and check out the underbody. So I hit the clutch linkage and the master cylinder, which is a single service. And it looks like it has manual brakes, but then I see a vacuum hose running over to this tree and the vacuum goes into the cab. So maybe, maybe that's just for the controls, but then it runs back under the truck too. So let's see what's up with that. Um, the vacuum hose coming in here goes to this, what looks like a safety switch and then runs over. So I'm not sure what that is. We'll find out later. And we'll go ahead and hit this clutch linkage in here too. So hopefully get this pedal moving freely. Because right now, it just sticks. That vacuum hose runs all the way down the frame to this vacuum storage tank. And then that tank runs over to this brake booster. So it does have power brakes. Um, which I'm sure don't work. Oh boy. And so the line comes in right here and then back out the front, which runs back to the frame, comes through, tees off right here, runs up front and, and out back. But I can't say I've worked on this style system before. You can see the front axle is pretty much in the ground and actually the tie rod is what kept it from going lower on this root here, which it bent. Bent the tie rod a little bit. I'll have to get that jacked up. This does have a parking brake on the drive line too. Like a drum brake, cable, cable driven drum brake, parking brake. And there's a look at the tranny. Despite all the rust, look how thick this frame is. She is real solid. Get some lube on that clutch fork, pivot. Glad it doesn't have a hydraulic clutch anyway. Up front, things are looking pretty good. The oil pan's got a nice coating, so no rust on the bottom. Freeze plugs all intact over here. And on the driver's side, we can see the middle core plug was replaced with a rubber plug. Oil filter looks like it's close to rusting through, so we'll definitely get one of those. I see some engine numbers on the passenger side. Wonder if that's the main numbers. Looks like D4TE 
One, based on all the research I just did, this is more than likely a 360 engine, but it could be a 390, and the only way to verify that would be measuring the actual stroke of the piston. Well, probably the best and easiest way. Not gonna get into that now, but I'm sure it's a 360. Back to getting some spark. Uh, you guys have seen me do this a million other videos. So, oh, this doesn't have points in it though. Check that out. So maybe we'll just have spark. Vacuum advance works too. So let's energize this coil. We got continuity through the windings. So let's see what we got. Oh, good spark, sweet. We got all those plug wires routed according to a firing order diagram I found online. And now I just loosened the bottom bolt on the alternator. We got to uh, snug down these belts because they're just so loose. So if it starts, it's gonna make a lot of noise. I get them snugged down a little bit. Snip that fuel line. A little fire juice in. Maybe a little lot. And here goes nothing. Went ahead and took the belts off. Just to get motor crafts on here. Uh, alternator spins freely. Water pump completely seized up. So it's good that we took this off. Yeah, he's still got some life left in him. Our carb linkage has been soaking for a little while. Seems to link to the pedal. Is seized, the one going horizontal. So we'll try and just disconnect that for now. And even with the rod off, the linkage is still really tight on there. So I'll just force it open. Oh no. She don't want to go. I'm sure she's got to come off anyway. Looks like a Rochester, right? Took a little while spraying it and I had to force it open, but after going back and forth a few times, it's it's working. I'm gonna try that one more time. A lot of you guys mentioned, why don't I change the oil first? And well, the answer is oil's expensive and I'd rather see if the engine runs first. Plus most of these engines are worn out anyway, so it's I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> That's a runner. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap. I hear something leaking, though. We got oil leaking from where? Oh, from the oil filter. Yep, she she was rusted through, like I said. So we will drain the oil now. Well, actually, you know, that doesn't, that's good oil. We're going to leave that in and just get a filter for now. I was just putting together a list of some of the parts I need, and then I was thinking, oh, maybe there's some stuff back here. We got a water pump. I don't know if it goes to this truck or not. Uh, but maybe I'll find like some filters or something. Look at this old Motorola. Whoa! Wow. Car phone. So cool. I'm gonna go make the parts run, get an oil filter so we can try to run that a little bit longer, give it fuel, and get a socket for these. I wanna try to pull these wheels off of it. The master cylinder, maybe a few other parts, probably the carb. I wonder if these are reverse thread or not. Don't, oh, these are reverse thread. Look at that. Oh boy! Oh, there it goes. Tight. Wow! Even if I could get that old 24 lug nuts, that'd take about three hours. Kinda need a socket. Nope. Thought oh, maybe I'd get lucky. Time for a scooter ride, parts run, and lunch break. Got the gyro in here. Oh yeah, that was about to open up, huh? I'm trying to save that. Done for. Wasn't safe. Funnest part of the day so far, ripping this thing around. All right, back to work on this junker. Oh boy. Well, I guess I should have figured on that crushing in. There it goes. Man, it's amazing how much harder everything is when you don't have the best holes and you're working on the ground. Let's 
should really pre-fill this, but I'm not too worried about it. Hook some auxiliary fuel up to this thing. Let's see what the carburetor does. That always gets people real upset in the comments when you don't pull the carb and you just put fuel right to it. Let's start with that 400. And the important thing is when we crack this, I'll put a valve on here now. When we crack this open, we want to see that fuel. Whoa, oh shoot. All right, it's shooting out right there. The old one's got a rust hole in it. I don't even see that. I have to cut that back a little bit. Or try out my new wire brush and we'll just slide the hose past it. As I was saying, if you want to watch the fuel level drop and also listen for fuel in the bowl. And it is dropping, so that means the carb's taking fuel. I always like to take something and tap the carburetor so that way, in case the float's stuck. And then take a look down there and make sure you're not dumping fuel. We're not in this case, so the float has shut off. Fuel level stabilized, and we're ready to start it up. need to be cleaned out. Well, at this point, we are gonna pull some more parts off like the carb, the hydro booster, and try to get whatever we can. And then prep for a possible part two on this, but definitely not driving this today. There's uh, no chance of that happening. Get to find out what that key does. I guess it is some kind of a governor or something. Very cool. basically completely shot that rusted through but I'd be curious to see what it looks like inside wonder if my Milwaukee half inch impact can take those lug nuts off this is the the good one the 2767-20 I got it on speed 3 full Titan I'm gonna say no but we'll see oh, yeah. no problem look at that Harbor Freight two-ton aluminum, lifts it no problem. Look at that. I just got lucky with that one. Yep. Hey, come on. Oh, there goes that. <laughs> Luckily, it's Harbor Freight, I believe. So we need a bigger breaker bar for getting the wheels off. Spare tire tools? Uh, no, not so lucky. Look, that hose that was hooked down below, that comes up here. What's this? Anybody know what that is? Maybe just an air, a breather for that brake booster keys? get lucky here now spark plug wire and a piece of 3 8 mpt maybe it's half inch i didn't notice that first glance on the cluster but this is actually a vacuum gauge looked like it would be a tachometer because it's so big but it shows if it drops below eight inches of vacuum then a red warning light comes on and you should pull over however if you must proceed then you can keep going and it says hydraulic brake system is still available by pushing hard on the brake pedal how about this fuel tank see if we can't get the drain off on the bottom um no <laughs> not even uh it's completely rounded off so pretty much to the bottom there nothing smells like horrible though all right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and start wrapping part one up here. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this truck has kicked my butt today. Uh, didn't realize it was going to be quite as rough as it was. We did get the motor running, so that was cool. But it's a long way away from driving. Is it even worth fixing? I'm not sure about that. 
I got a bucket of parts here, so I'll more than likely in the end of this video I'll show you guys inside that carburetor. We'll figure out what's up with that um, throttle body lock thing too. And yeah, you know, it's it's tough. So here's the deal. Uh, this truck is for sale and it's in Philly. If somebody's interested in buying this, they need an F600 for parts or they want that nice axle in there. I think they, these might have a Rockwell axle, but there's a ton of potential here and a lot of good parts on this truck. So if you are interested, feel free to drop a comment down below or shoot me an email. However, she's asking a firm $3,000 on this truck. Now that might seem like a lot of money at first, but uh, I guess when you consider its scrap value is right around a thousand dollars anyway this says empty weight 8380 on it uh it's not terrible and if you consider that a lot of these parts you can't even get anymore like these nice doors look at these these are beautiful they're not rotted out on the bottom so if you got an f600 look for something for parts let me know because i don't think she's gonna be a runner driver unfortunately i mean i'd like to do that and if you guys have enough interest in, in seeing me spend another two three days here trying to work all the kinks out then then that'd be cool what do you think this truck is worth like after seeing everything i showed you on it today you know, i think three grand's a little steep but what do you guys think what's a fair market price for this truck uh for for somebody that thinks they might get it running or just even need it for parts what do you think but anyway i'm gonna get wrapped up here and uh, probably go grab some dinner so that is the f600 that was a part one and yeah i hope to see you again in a future video any feedback down below, like usual, hugely appreciated. No nonsense, no how here. Over out for today, and I'll roll forward to that footage of inside the carburetor and such. Just over at my work and wanted to touch on these parts. So I popped the carburetor apart. You could see the float is in good shape and was working. The needle's in nice shape too. Look at that seat, no corrosion. However, just a bunch of rust and crud in there. Uh, which clogged the main jets solid. Those are the main jets right there with my fat finger. Uh, and here is the, the pumper diaf diaphragm. That's completely torn too. So it was pissing out of the pumper. Oh, and then look at the atomizers or emulsion tubes. Those are real blocked up, clogged up too. So this thing definitely needs a thorough cleaning. And over here, this throttle body lock, real interesting. I popped off the side cover uh, which had like safety wire to prevent well I guess to show that it's been tampered with and so what you do when you turn this key it, this cylinder actually pushes in at least that's the way it looks and then it relieves the tension from this spring the spring is pulling back that way and then what happens there's a spring behind this one that actually pushes the throttle flaps closed so it's just a uh, extra security in case somebody I guess was going to jump start it and and seal it whatever interesting never seen that before uh, and then over here is the master cylinder now on ebay you can get one of these for about 60 bucks so there's really no sense in rebuilding this but if you were in a jam being cast iron like it is you could definitely get this rolling down the road here's a look at the inside in case you guys want to see that hopefully sorry about the shaky footage uh, or any blurriness and then over here the power brake booster Originally, I thought this was broken, but it turns out there is just a rubber hose that goes between that that was deteriorated. Uh, on the bottom of it, this is where that hose that came off sits in the truck like this. Uh, that hose came off and went inside the cab, which was kind of weird. I wonder if that's just like an alarm to tell you if it has failed or is just a vent. I'm not sure. If one of you guys know, feel free to comment that. would love to know. Get the bleeder port here. And so on eBay, you can get a remanufactured Cardone for like if it was 250 bucks, it probably wouldn't be worth uh, fixing this one. Uh, and a lot of fluid coming. Oh, yeah, brake fluid coming out of these hoses too. So that means you, know, you got to take this half apart to be able to get the uh, cylinder off of here. But I think you're better off just getting it remanufactured if you were going to be driving this truck. Could rebuild it though, for sure. I'm just cleaning this carb up a little bit and check that out remanufactured for u-haul got her all spit shined up inside just need a new pumper diaphragm and i think maybe we'll try and go throw this back on see if we can run it a little bit longer and how she sounds it's a nice saturday evening and you know what we're gonna take this car back down to that u-haul and see how she runs bringing jen along with me i'm gonna kind of make it like a date night so uh yeah some date night right figure it down here at the yard got everything hooked back up when i sent fuel to it this the float was actually sticking so i turned the fuel off for now but should be plenty flooded oh i got zapped that time 
jumped through the wire right to me. Uh, that's, I think I left a vacuum hose off in the back. Yes, yes I did. PCV hose. Go on. Yes, love it. This truck is so happy right now. I mean, even if we do nothing else, that could be the difference of saving this motor. If it's set for another 20 years plus without nobody messing with it, I mean, beautiful. Well, we don't have any cooling water. The water pump's not hooked up, so I can't run that for too long, but yeah. That, uh, that sounds nice. This thing's got a ton of potential. That's just all that oil burning off in the exhaust from these leaking valve covers. All right, so Chris is gonna try and move this big rig over here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's hope it goes well. We have no water in the cooling system or a water pump, so we can't really run it for much. I just wanna see if it goes into gear, you know, if the clutch releases and if it moves 10 feet, I'd be happy. Two feet, a foot. Even if it moved a foot, I'd be happy. All right, carburetor's not leaking anymore. Will it go into gear if I press the clutch? Watch, watch yourself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it in reverse. Yeah, went into reverse. You don't wanna go nowhere. We'll let that cool down for another 15, 20 minutes. We're working on the Bronco too over there a little bit right now and maybe give that one more go in granny first. I was trying reverse there, but uh, you could hear it struggling. It wasn't doing nothing. Did it move? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, we'll let it rest. The rear brakes are probably locked up one. It got nothing. Is it really safe to move it without a brake test? Oh yeah, it wouldn't roll very far. It's got flat tires, so, but what are you, you worried about? It? No, I just see that there's a house there. This thing is not rolling anywhere far with, um, without a lot of power. And that concludes the part one on the U-Haul. We didn't get it rolling today, but we're gonna try again soon. Are we? Yeah. I don't know about that one. We'll see if, if Jen wants to come down and put in a day's day or two wearing a white tank top, then maybe we'll do it. All right, thanks guys, over out. Bye.